my friend, we are ready. Okay. Well, thank you to everyone for, for coming. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Ben Iverson, and I'm director of international programs at a small private university called Augustana University. And um, it's a big pleasure for me to be here with you today. Um, I'm going to spend maybe the first 20 minutes telling you a, a little bit more about my school. And I will do that in Spanish, um, in part so the parents in the room can understand. And then I'll spend another 20 minutes or so speaking about the college essay, um, because that's a very important part of the application process for you in the United States. And that part I'm going to do in English uh, so that the students in the room can practice uh, their English listening skills as well. But um, I speak both languages, of course, and so I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have um, in either Spanish or English. And, and thank you again very much for, for coming. I, I have to tell you that um, I feel a special connection to you in Guatemala because my family lived in uh, San Lucas Toliman, uh, a small town um, on Lake Atitlan a uh, number of years ago before I was born. And so we still have a number of friends and uh, godchildren and those kinds of things in the region. So Guatemala is very special to me. And I'm, I'm glad uh, personally, on a personal level, that you're interested in um, potentially studying with us and, and uh, studying in the US in general. So now, if you give me just a second, I'm going to attempt to share my screen so that you can see um, uh, my PowerPoint. And so, Martial, maybe you can uh, you can tell me if this works, okay? Can you see my screen now? Martial? Can't see it yet. You can't see it, okay. No. Um, so it should be on your left. Okay. Uh, there you go. <coughs> we can see it now. Okay, okay, very good. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, so there, there's my contact information. Um, and I'll, I'll share that with you again at the end. Um, pero primero en español. Um, Augustana University es una universidad privada pequeña. Um, fue fundado en 1860. Entonces tenemos casi 160 años de experiencia. Y es una de las universidades más viejas en nuestra región de los Estados Unidos en el Medio Oeste. Voy a discutir um, un poco más sobre nuestra ubicación en um, una diapositiva próxima. Pero estamos ubicados en la ciudad de Sioux Falls, South Dakota, en el estado de, de, de Dakota del Sur. Um, tenemos más o menos 2,000 estudiantes en la universidad y, por supuesto, en nuestro contexto, esto es bastante pequeño. Um, Es más o menos 8% de estudiantes internacionales. Hay más o menos 45 países representados en nuestro campus, incluyendo um, un estudiante ahora de, de Guatemala. Y ofrecemos más o menos 50 carreras al nivel pregrado. Nuestro enfoque es, es el nivel pregrado en el caso de, de Augustana University. Um, un poco sobre la, la calidad, eso es en inglés, por supuesto, pero um, somos conocidos como un buen valor, o sea, una buena calidad y, eh, y eh, no tenemos costos muy malos um, cuando consideras la, el resto del país. En, en nuestra región tenemos los costos de vida más bajos en todo el país. Y entonces es una gran ventaja para nuestros estudiantes 
uh, extranjeros. Y hay algunos ejemplos de nuestros rankings acá de las revistas en los Estados Unidos que, que dan rankings a universidades. Y um, sí, es, es una buena calidad y, y los costos no son tan malos como las otras universidades, um, sobre todo en las ciudades más grandes en los Estados Unidos. Ok. Yo creo que es, es un campus, es una universidad um, global. E, entonces, como dije, hay más o menos uh, 160 estudiantes internacionales en el campus, pero también más o menos 50% de nuestros estudiantes de acá estudian fuera de los Estados Unidos uh, durante su programa con nosotros, I, incluyendo mandamos más o menos 10 o 15 estudiantes a Guatemala cada enero para estudiar allá durante un mes. Entonces, nuestros estudiantes norteamericanos tienen la experiencia de ser y estar en, en un otro país y, y practicando otra lengua y esas cosas. Y, y por eso saben cómo es ser un, un estudiante internacional. Y por eso, yo creo que tenemos un ambiente dentro del campus muy cómodo para, para nuestros estudiantes internacionales. Es muy fácil conocer a otra gente. Uh, nuestras clases son pequeñas también. Una clase al nivel promedio sería de más o menos 20 personas. ¿okay? Es un ambiente perfecto, en mi opinión, para estudiantes internacionales. Um, Ay, perdón. <laughs> Screen share. Okay. Um, Augustana es conocido también como un líder en educación internacional. Entonces, tenemos convenios con un montón de organizaciones globales que apoyan al uh, intercambio de estudiantes internacional. Y incluyendo, um, trabajamos mucho con Education USA. Y es un placer estar con ustedes y con Education USA hoy día, por supuesto. Um, un poco sobre nuestra ubicación, entonces, también, como se puede ver, estamos ubicados allá con la estrella amarilla en la ciudad de Sioux Falls. Y nuestro monumento más famoso está allá, Monte Rushmore. Y, por supuesto, vamos allá uh, durante nuestro programa de orientación con todos de nuestros estudiantes internacionales. Um, Aquí en, en la foto tenemos la cáscara, um, y cas, cáscara en, en inglés quiere decir falls, y, y por eso el nombre de, de la ciudad viene um, de, de, de la cáscara que tenemos, y un parque muy bonito en, en la ciudad. Um, como dije, en, en la región medio oeste en los Estados Unidos, tenemos costos de, de vida muy bajos, y, y un buen ambiente para estudiantes internacionales. Um, pensamos que es, es la ciudad perfecta para estudiar. Eh, tenemos una población de más o menos 200 um, mil es, eh, personas en la ciudad. Hay como 700 restaurantes, eh, una, un mall muy grande, esas cosas. Pero a la misma vez es una ciudad muy segura, no tenemos ningún problema con tráfico ni, ni nada de eso. Es un buen sitio para vivir sobre todo. Y tenemos una economía buenísima. Tenemos, uh, por ejemplo, un porcentaje de desempleo bajo de 2% uh, dentro de nuestra ciudad y por eso si quieres trabajar, uh, incluyendo cuando estás con nosotros estudiando, uh, se puede muy fácilmente. Y sobre todo si eres bilingüe, es una ventaja también, porque um, los empleos acá en, en nuestra región de los Estados Unidos quieren um, personas que pueden hablar español también. Um, 
se puede ver allá unas fotos de, del centro de la ciudad. Se puede ver que no tenemos edificios muy, muy grandes como en Nueva York o algo así, pero a la misma vez es una ciudad. Es, es muy verde, es muy segura, muchos parques, esas cosas. Pero también tenemos dos rankings um, muy buenas, creo, desde um, unas revistas también acá en, en los Estados Unidos. Uno es de, de Business Insider. Business Insider dice que es la ciudad de Sioux Falls es la mejor ciudad en todo el país para jóvenes profesionales. Y eso es porque tenemos una economía buenísima y también la ciudad es, es un centro para, para uh, bancos y inversiones en los Estados Unidos. Y entonces hay trabajos muy buenos uh, dentro de administración y, y también Um, en nuestros hospitales grandes y esas cosas en la ciudad. Y otro ranking, uh, Forbes dice que es, es la mejor ciudad pequeña para trabajos y, y carreras. Again, uh, otra vez um, incluyendo el, todo del país. Entonces es, es un buen sitio para vivir como estudiante. Aquí se puede ver uh, nuestro campus. Como dije, es, es muy verde. Uh, acá tenemos... Um, las canchas deportistas. Um, como sabes, fútbol americano es muy importante aquí. <ríe> tenemos un estadio muy grande allá y aquí tenemos el fútbol, uh, la cancha de fútbol, un poco menos grande, ¿ok? <ríe> Pero um, es un, un campus muy bonito. Y aquí tenemos todos de nuestros edificios académicos y también um, los dormitorios y apartamentos para los estudiantes. Um, si quieres vivir dentro de nuestro campus, se puede y, y ofrecemos comidas y, y todo que un estudiante necesita para vivir um, uh, aquí en, en nuestra ciudad. Algunas fotos más del campus acá. Um, cada universidad, como ustedes saben, me imagino, Uh, tiene una mascota y, y en nuestro caso somos los vikingos. Entonces tenemos la estatua de, del vikingo allá. Um, ofrecemos, como dije, más o menos 50 carreras y al nivel pregrado. Se puede verlos allá. Um, las, en, las carreras en Amaría son los, las carreras más populares para estudiantes internacionales. Somos conocidos por administración, como dije, y también las ciencias, o sea, biología, química, ingeniería, esas cosas. Uh, pero hay un montón de, de cosas que se puede escoger cuando estás estudiando con nosotros. Y como dije, una clase al nivel promedio sería más o menos 21 personas. Entonces es, es muy fácil conocer a tu profesor y, y encontrar uh, apoyo si, si es necesario uh, dentro de, de tus estudios con nosotros. Um, nos divertimos también. Hay un montón de clubes, deportes, organizaciones. Uh, Uh, organizaciones para uh, volantizar en, en nuestra comunidad, um, organizaciones de fe, uh, muchas cosas. Entonces, um, se puede divertirse acá también, por supuesto. Es, es algo muy importante y, y parte de nuestra cultura en la universidad aquí en los Estados Unidos, creo. Um, yo creo que tenemos unos resultados muy excepcionales en el caso de, de Augustana. Tal vez la, la cosa más importante es que 99% de nuestros estudiantes tienen éxito en um, encontrar un trabajo dentro de seis meses después de graduar uh, desde Augustana. Eso es muy importante. Por supuesto, quieres saber que vas a tener éxito en tu carrera después de graduarse, por, su, por supuesto. Y yo creo que una razón, una razón por, por esto es que 
casi 100% también de nuestros estudiantes tienen una experiencia, muchas veces muchas experiencias, fuera de las clases um, aquí en Augustana. Y se puede, puede ser un, una pasantía, una experiencia fuera de nuestro país, um, um, trabajos, por supuesto, Uh, esas cosas para que nuestros estudiantes puedan ganar experiencia profesional después de graduar. Eso es muy importante y contribuye a el porcentaje de, de nuestros estudiantes que um, tienen éxito encontrando un trabajo. Y uh, la última cosa que, que quiere, quiero uh, decir eh, eh, acá es que también los sueldos que uh, nuestros recién graduado, graduados ganan uh, también es bastante buena, sobre todo uh, acá en, en nuestra región de los Estados Unidos. Se puede um, comprar una casa con este sueldo, por ejemplo, un, un carro si quieres. Um, tener, se puede tener una buena calidad de vida aquí en los Estados Unidos con este sueldo promedio. Entonces, como dije, nuestros estudiantes tienen éxito. Um, algunos ejemplos de, de los em, empleos donde trabajan nuestros estudiantes um, después de graduar y algunos de, de las universidades más famosas al nivel posgrado donde nuestros estudian, estudiantes han ido uh, después de terminar sus carreras pregrados con nosotros. Um, aquí tenemos el proceso de admisión. Um, es, el proceso es, es parecido para casi cada universidad en, en los Estados Unidos, pero cada universidad se puede decir exactamente lo que quieren. Entonces, hay que preguntar a cada universidad que quieren dentro del, del proceso de admisión. Pero en nuestro caso, por supuesto, queremos ver um, su solicitud, el, el formulario de admisión. Y en nuestro caso es gratis, no cobramos nada para aplicar. Entonces, no hay ni, ningún riesgo si, si quieres intentar con nosotros, por supuesto. Um, por supuesto, también quieres ver uh, sus notas en colegio o también en, en uh, universidad, si, si ya has empezado en universidad, su transcripción, o sea, es, es importante. Queremos ver una carta de recomendación de un profesor o de un maestro uh, en, en su colegio, o sea, una otra opinión sobre um, tu habilidad uh, como estudiante. Um, entonces, por supuesto, um, quieres ver um, un examen de inglés normalmente, puede ser el TOEFL o, o IELTS, o también si ya tienes un alto nivel de inglés, uh, también puede ser el SAT. El SAT es un examen um, uh, que todos de, de los estudiantes uh, acá en los Estados Unidos sacan antes de ingresar en una universidad. Um, luego, eh, cada universidad hay que preguntar por un formulario financiero. El gobierno estadounidense dice que um, tenemos que tener una prueba uh, financiera que, que dice que tienes um, suficientes recursos para pagar por sus estudios en los Estados Unidos y una foto uh, de tu pasaporte. Y porque luego vamos a mandarles un formulario que se llama el I-20. Y el I-20 es lo que necesitas uh, para ganar una, una visa desde la embajada allá en la ciudad de Guatemala. La cosa que, que he faltado allá es el ensayo. El, y, y eso es, es una cosa muy, muy importante en nuestro proceso de admisión, um, que vamos a hablar sobre este tema eh, en inglés en un momento. Pero a, antes de eso, uh, la última cosa es que uh, quieres, um, quiero describir nuestros costos y, y becas un, un poco también. Eh, 
digamos que nuestros costos comprensivos, incluyendo matrícula, la, la, los costos de enseñanza, vivienda, comida, tenemos un plan ilimitado en nuestro costo, seguros de salud, libros y algunas tasas pequeñas, serían más o menos 46 mil al año. Y eso es caro, por supuesto. Aunque una, ciudad, una universidad parecida, ubicada en una ciudad grande como Nueva York o algo así, sería fácilmente 65, 75 um, en total. Entonces, como dije, es una ventaja estudiar en el centro del país. Pero la, las buenas notici noticias son que eh, ofrecemos becas bastante grandes también para nuestros estudiantes internacionales. En nuestro caso tenemos becas académicas entre 10.000 y 23.000 al año. Entonces, uh, una, una beca promedia para un estudiante internacional sería esto, pero si ganas nuestra beca más grande, entonces, se puede estudiar con nosotros por más o menos 23 mil al año. Y yo creo que sería bastante difícil encontrar una universidad de nuestra calidad en los Estados Unidos por menos de, de este precio. Eh, y por eso digamos que es un, un buen valor, a, a good value en inglés. ¿Ok? Entonces, um, queremos... Um, I'm going to switch gears now and uh, change into English. So I, I, I hope that that was a helpful overview for you um, of the university. I ho hope you could understand my Spanish. I'm still learning, of course, uh, maybe like you're still learning English. And um, I, I will definitely leave some time at the end. So if you or your parents have any questions, of course, I'll be glad to uh, to answer those at the, the end, either about um, my university or about the application process in general. But now I'd really like to focus on the college essay itself um, because this is really a very important part of the admissions process. In fact, in some cases, including at Augustana University, we place, in fact, more emphasis on the essay than even the um, exams. So for us, the essay, in fact, is more important than something like the SAT or uh, the TOEFL exam. Um, your grades are probably the most important factor, but uh, the college essay is not far behind. So this is a, a very important process for, for us and many other universities in, in the US. And so here's, here's a bit of an overview of what, what I would like to discuss um, today. So I'll cover why um, it's important and why universities require the essay. Um, typically, there are two different types of essays that a university might ask you for. One could be a personal statement. The other could be um, a specific topic or question that they ask you to address. And so I'll I'll talk about the differences between those two and how to approach them. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk just a little bit about the timeline. Um, th this is definitely something you should not leave until the last minute. Um, the best essays often students take considerable time to, to produce. And then I'll, I'll cover some important tips um, and some additional articles and places that you can find more information about uh, the topic of the college essay. Okay, so first, um, why? Why do American universities make you go through the hassle and the work <laughs> and the struggle maybe of writing an essay in English? Um, well, here are, are some of the reasons. Um, certainly, you know, we will have you take an exam um, like the TOEFL or the IELTS or the SAT and so we have one measure of evaluating your level of English through those exams, of course. Um, but the, the essay gives us another window to really understand your, your level of English. And the, part of the reason that that's important is that really regardless of your uh, major field, your career here at, at Augustana or any other university in the US, you will do a lot of writing 
Um, that's just a, a, a part of, of most university systems in the United States. Even in something like math or the sciences, you will do lots of writing as you um, write up descriptions of your lab reports and those kinds of things. And so um, spoken English is important, of course, in one thing, but we also want to know that you're, you're fluent um, in your writing ability. Perhaps the, an equally important thing is that we really want to get to know you personally. Um, and so through your essay, it gives us a bit more of a window into you as an individual or as a human. Because of course, um, you know, your grades are important, what your teachers think about you is important, the different activities that you participate in is important to us. Um, and certainly your exam scores are important, but um, but that all of those things don't really tell the, the whole story of who you are as a person. And so that's what we really want to get at through the, the essay process, basically, in part because it helps us determine this concept of fit. So occasionally, just for an example, this is kind of an extreme example, but occasionally we have students who apply to Augustana and to other schools who might talk in their essay about a major that we don't even offer here at Augustana, right? So in that case, um, so for example, we, we don't offer a um, program in medicine. Me medicine is really a graduate level program in the US. And so if a student talks about wanting to study medicine at Augustana, um, we know that perhaps we're not the, the best fit for that student because we don't offer what they want. And, and so that's kind of a simple or extreme example, but that's partly what we're evaluating through an essay is whether or not we can really serve you well as a student, okay? Um, so in addition to evaluating your, your um, writing ability in English itself, um, we're also really evaluating your analytical skills because um, of course, that's what you do in your writing in college is you analyze perhaps um, several articles or a lecture that your professor might give you on a particular topic and um, you'll write what you think about it. You'll analyze what it means or you might apply it, uh, some, some knowledge that you've gained to a particular topic. And so we want to um, see how you think uh, through, your, through your writing. So that's another uh, really important aspect of the essay process. Um, certainly, if, if you mention in your essay particular interests or, or particular needs that you might have as a student, um, that's one thing that we might make note of in the admission process and um, uh, help direct you towards the appropriate um, resources so that you can be the most successful uh, that you can be while you're in university. Um, so that's another thing. And then finally, um, of course, as we're evaluating students, we um, assign particular rankings, I guess, to students based on your grades and extracurricular activities, exam scores, all of these things we've mentioned. And so the essay is, at least in our case, weighted as a very important um, component of this um, process. But for other universities, it might be used as a tiebreaker. So if, in other words, if they're evaluating two very similar candidates for admission, um, they're very likely to offer both admission and perhaps a scholarship to the student that has the better essay, okay? So um, many ways that uh, we use this, um, this essay in the admissions process to get to know you, to evaluate your skills and abilities, and sometimes even as a tiebreaker both for admission and for scholarships. Okay, so I mentioned that there are, are two um, kind of big categories, I guess, for essays in the United States. One, one is the, the personal statement, okay? And so in this category, what the university is really after is getting to know you better as a person and, and wanting to determine um, how the university might be a fit and what you bring to the campus um, that might either be unique or, or um, what you can contribute to the student body, okay? Because of course, universities don't want um, to are interested only in business 
and soccer, right? We want students that represent a wide variety of interests and skills and abilities and experiences and know that we have a very vibrant and diverse student body. And so we want to know what, what makes you unique and what, um, what kinds of things you might bring to our student body. So um, often the, the college or university might ask very simply for a personal statement. And you might say, okay, well, what does that mean? Where do, I, you know, how do I even get started in, in an essay that's supposed to be a personal statement? But here are some sample questions that you might consider including in, in such a statement, okay? So um, why do you want to study at a particular university? If you want to be a business major, for example, why? What do you want to do with business? What's your dream job? Um, how will you contribute to the university or to society once you graduate? All of those kinds of things. What are your dreams for the future? Um, what makes you unique? This is kind of the reverse, but what makes you a good fit for the university? The reverse of what makes the university a good fit for you, right? And so this is where you should do some homework and obviously do a little bit of research about the university um, so that you can make a, a good argument for how you fit in and why you might bring um, a unique dynamic in studying there. Um, what do you want to accomplish in the future? Um, sometimes universities also appreciate knowing if you've had any uh, significant challenges in your life or, or um, unique life experiences. So we, we know uh, through research that students that have already overcome a significant challenge in your life um, are more likely than to have success in college because college itself uh, can be a big challenge. It's often more difficult from from high school, um, in your case, you're probably going to be coming to college in the US in a second language, of course, assuming that you speak Spanish as your first language. Um, and so if you've overcome some of these challenges in a previous life, we know it's likely that you have the skills and adaptability to be successful in adapting to college life here in the US, okay? So sometimes that can be a good topic if you have one of those things. Um, what are you passionate about? I think this is a really good one because if you're passionate about a specific topic or problem in society, whatever it might be, that will come through in your essay. Typically, the, the best essays that we read are uh, uh, about a topic or something that's very important to a given student um, because you probably have lots to say and you've probably thought fairly deeply about the topic itself as well. So again, we're analyzing your analytical abilities and the depth of thinking and how you think, okay? Um, another one could be what, what problems do you want to solve um, through your career? Do you want to solve um, poverty? Do you want to study business um, so you can start a nonprofit organization? Do you want to study political science so that you can um, help the world become a more peaceful place? What, whatever it is, um, those can be good things to address in a personal statement type essay as well. Um, so in contrast to the personal statement, sometimes universities might give you, in fact, a very specific topic to, to answer. And so this is up to the, the university. They, they could ask you almost anything. Um, fortunately, sometimes they, they also give you uh, maybe three or four or five different questions or prompts and you get to choose which one to respond to. So, so often there is just a little bit of, of choice with this. Um, but so, I mean, a couple of very, very common examples might be, um, one could be discuss a current event and its importance to you. So it could be an election or a natural disaster or um, a current problem like global warming or, um, water issues or any of those kinds of things that might be important to you locally in Guatemala or important to you personally. Um, so discuss a current event and its importance to you. Um, another one that, that is pretty common that uh, makes you think a little bit would be um, if you could meet anyone in history, a historical figure, who would it be and why? So would you want to meet um, Gandhi, or Abraham Lincoln, or um, 
Jesus or who, yeah, who would you, who would you want to meet and why? Uh, and through that topic, it's kind of a different approach, but through that topic, the university, of course, is still um, learning about you and what's important to you and how you think, okay? So it's a different method of accomplishing more or less the same goals, okay? So a few tips here. One is to, to definitely address the topic. You know, that, that seems very simple, but I also read a number of essays sometimes that don't really actually address the question that kind of goes off on, on a tangent. And, and um, sometimes they're entertaining, but um, really the university wants to, again, analyze your ability to address a specific topic in this case, because that's what you're going to do in a university classroom or as homework, I guess, for a particular class at a university. Um, if you can, it, it's always a wise idea to take a, a unique approach or bring a unique perspective, especially if you, if you can share a, a unique perspective that might be different uh, from the average American student, for example. So if you know a little bit about American culture and uh, perspectives on a particular topic, if you can bring a different perspective, that's always advantageous because again, universities want to know um, what you're bringing to them and that you will bring a, a diverse perspective to really make classroom discussions uh, more lively and interesting, if that makes sense. Um, you know, if you can choose a topic that relates to you specifically or to your studies or that you're personally passionate about, that's always advantageous because, again, that comes through in your writing. Um, and as I mentioned, again, the purpose of this really is to test your, your writing skills and your analysis and, and to see how you think, um, you know, wh why you, you would want to meet Abraham Lincoln and, and what that means for you. Um, in terms of your, your studies and future goals and uh, how it might change your life if you could go back in history and ask uh, someone a question like that inside of that example. But again, universities are free to ask you nearly any question and nearly any topic, and so you have to do some research and um, find out ahead of time exactly what they might be asking for. Okay, so a, a little bit about the timeline now. Um, so honestly, the, the best essays, when I say start early, the best essays, it's very clear that students have started sometimes a year or more in advance, okay? I know that seems like a really long time, but that's really true. Um, and part of the reason that that is true is that you know, you should be a year or so in advance researching the requirements of universities so that you can see what they're going to require in terms of an essay. Um, and of course, all the other requirements in terms of grades and whether they require the SAT or just the TOEFL exam, those kinds of things. Um, so a year or even more in advance is, is really ideal in many cases. Um, in part, I haven't mentioned this yet, it, it's because um, the application process for us also starts about a year in advance. And so uh, using Augustana as an example, it's, it's now September, and so we are now accepting our first applications for September of 2019, okay? And um, so the students that are really on top of things um, you know, maybe have already taken the SAT and have already given some thought to the essay that they're um, uh, about to write or are in the process of writing for us. Um, so again, it's in the US, it's a long process. I, I know that uh, in Latin America, it's much more common to apply a couple of months maybe before a university starts. But here in the US, that won't work for a number of reasons. Um, uh, typically, we offer scholarships, potentially bigger scholarships, to earlier applicants in the process. And there's also the, the process of applying for a student visa that takes some time. And so the, the process in the U.S. really takes about a year um, when it's all said and done, okay? Um, again, you know, most of the best essays have quite obviously been revised and revised and revised over and over again write your essay, get it all on paper, let it be for a while, for a week maybe, and then come back to it and think about it again. And you might have um, some additional insights 
um, uh, to, to kind of add or, or change it as you see it with a new set of eyes. And, and that, that process takes some time. So um, it is as helpful as far as that's concerned. Um, it's okay to ask for help. Um, obviously, you can't ask someone else to write your essay for you. But certainly, you can ask someone who's um, very fluent in English to, to help you with editing your essay. But, but also for other perspectives, because certainly, um, you know, a, another person or two will read your essay with a different lens, with a different vantage point. And, and so they may help you um, start to think about what the, what the um, college admissions team uh, might be thinking when they're reading your, your essay. Um, and so that, that's okay. Getting other perspectives is definitely okay. And then finally, um, Make it a personal and a true representation of yourself. The best essays that I read are, are very obviously honest and, and truthful, and um, it's clear that the student is, is either passionate or has really thought deeply about whatever the topic might be. And so, um, yeah, make it, make it personal and, and make it true. Don't, don't just tell the university what you think they might want to hear from you or about a particular topic, but tell them what you really think. Because again, in, in the US culture, um, we really value a variety of opinions and thoughts and perspectives. And, and indeed, that's in fact what um, faculty demand in the case of um, papers and, and classroom discussions and those kinds of things. They wanna know your thoughts about a particular topic um, not just kind of regurgitating what the professor might have shared themselves, if that makes sense, okay? So start early is, is the main thing. Revise as much as you can and don't wait until the last minute. This should be something that you do well in advance. Um, just a few tips here. So again, make it your, your own work. Um, plagiarism is, is a term that refers to essentially copying someone else's work. You know, of course, you can find college essay answers on the internet and those kinds of things. But the truth of the matter is, is college admission teams also have tools to determine um, whether or not, you know, it was copied or, or found um, online someplace. And so if you, if you do that, of course, you'll be de denied admission and uh, certainly won't receive scholarships and those kinds of things. So make it your own work. Make it honest and a true represent representation of yourself. Um, sometimes in, in essays, um, you know, on the, the application itself, we will ask you many questions about the activities that you're in in high school, for example. And so um, if you're in lots of sports or music or volunteer activities or you work, those are all fine things to talk about uh, in your essay. But it, it, your essay really shouldn't be a list of the things that you're involved with, because we've already got that information on your application. Rather, we, we, would, we would rather have you focus on just one thing if you're going to talk about an activity, in this example, uh, maybe a sport, but whatever it is, just one thing that is very important to you or that you're very passionate about, okay? So that um, it focuses your essay a little bit deeper than um, just a very simple list, I guess, of, of the activities that you're involved with. Um, again, provide depth and analysis. I've said that a number of times, but it's, it's very important. We really do want to see how you think and um, that you can analyze fairly deeply a particular topic. Um, make it personal, as we've said, and be succinct. Um, sometimes colleges or universities will give you a limit of the number of words or sentences or paragraphs that you might uh, be able to use. But, but typically, um, two to three pages at the most is uh, sort of what we're after. If, if you um, send us 20 pages uh, or a novel that you're written, that might be interesting for us on one level. But remember that uh, colleges and universities are reading literally thousands of applications. And so if we get something that's that lengthy, the chances that we will really read it that closely are unfortunately slim because we have limited time to spend on each application. So try to do all of these things, but be succinct. Try to do it within the context of two to three pages. And, and that really requires, again, 
that you focus on one particular topic um, fairly closely, I think, okay? Um, and so I, I assume that we'll be able to share the presentation with you after this. And so I've provided a, a few links here um, just for, for more information. So these first two are fairly recent articles, one from Princeton Review, one from US News that um, give you some similar but, but uh, additional tips for essay writing um, in the context of applying to colleges and universities. Um, and this last one actually provides you with some examples of good college essays that uh, help students be successful in getting into fairly professional or, or a fairly competitive rather uh, colleges and universities here in the US. And so again, they don't post those uh, for you to copy them, but just that you get a sense of what other people have done um, as examples uh, um, so that you might structure, for example, your essay in a similar way to some of the ways that students previously have structured their essays. Okay, so with that, um, I've gone a little bit over time, I think. I apologize for that, but I think we still maybe have 10 minutes or so for questions. And um, um, so again, my name is Ben Iverson. I'll close this uh, probably so that you can see my face again. I also have a, a colleague, just so that you know, named Wade Gamar. Um, and so if you uh, do decide to apply to our school, um, you very likely would, would work with Wade. He's really in charge of the international admissions process here um, at Augustana. But either one of us are very happy to help you of course, um, with the admissions process, or, or even if you just have a, a general question uh, for us about the admissions process in the US or um, about essays. But um, with that, I will stop sharing the presentation so that you can see me once again, maybe, if I can do this right here. Um, and I'd love to know if anybody, if anybody in the room has any questions. ¿Tienen preguntas específicas acerca de qué es lo que están buscando en el ensayo? ¿Algo que les gustaría saber más? ¿O de la universidad? Aprovechen. Sí, así veo. O alguien que no quiera pasar, pero que me quiera decir su pregunta, yo se lo digo acá. ¿Quieres venir a decirlo o que se la diga yo? Va, decime. Sí, es un proceso. Puede cambiar ciertas cosas. Ben, so the question is, like, how would the process change if someone holds a U.S. residency or a U.S. citizenship? Yeah. Okay. Bueno, in, in, in este caso, si, si tienes um, citizenship estadounidense o residencia permanente, um, pues básicamente el proceso es lo mismo. Um, en este caso, no vamos a requerir los documentos financieros porque este es una parte del proceso de aplicaciones para el, el visa estudiantil, pero el resto de, del proceso es básicamente lo, lo mismo. La única otra cosa es que eh, si tienes, um, ¿cómo se dice citizenship en español? No, no. Ciudadanía. 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 Gracias, estoy aprendiendo. Si tienes ciudadanía aquí en los Estados Unidos, también tienes acceso a apoyo del gobierno estadounidense en el tema de lo, las finanzas, si sí, se puede aplicar para, um, bueno, dinero en, en forma de becas o, o forma de, um, de loans también, um, um, préstamos de, de, um, del gobierno. Entonces, um, tienes acceso a, a otras formas de, de financiar Uh, tus costos con nosotros o cualquier universidad aquí en los Estados Unidos. Pero 
pero um, el resto del proceso es básicamente lo, lo mismo. Vamos a querer las notas de colegio, un, un ensayo, por supuesto, una carta de recomendación. Y si, como dije, si, si ya tienes un alto nivel de inglés, entonces vamos a que, querer um, el SAT en este caso también. El, el resto del proceso es, es lo mismo. ¿Otras preguntas que tengan? Okay. Uh, ben, so the question is like, what happens if they're in a non-traditional school where they don't have grades, but they have portfolios instead? What would the school be looking at? Yeah. Okay. Um, bueno, en, en, en el caso de, de un portfolio, por ejemplo, si, si la escuela no ofrece notas, entonces um, queremos evaluar algo, ¿no? Entonces puede ser un portfolio, unos ejemplos de, de los trabajos del estudiante durante su, uh, su carrera en, en la escuela. Um, entonces un... un um, um, bueno, un ensayo, unos ejemplos de tareas, exámenes, esas cosas podemos evaluar. También a la, a la misma vez um, es posible que podríamos estar en contacto con los uh, profesores o, o los maestros uh, directamente para hablar sobre la, eh, eh, el estudiante en, en este caso. Pero um, este tipo de, de escuela uh, también existe aquí en los Estados Unidos. No es muy común, pero sí existe y, y por eso, por supuesto, tenemos experiencia um, evaluando estudiantes en esas escuelas también. Entonces, no, no va a ser una sorpresa tal vez para la mayoría de eh, universidades aquí en los Estados Unidos, pero también Um, vamos a, a, a poner uh, más importancia dentro del proceso de evaluación um, en los exámenes en este caso, porque el examen es la única cosa que tenemos para, um, um, ¿cómo se dice? Compare, compare <ríe> estudiar, comparar, comparar eh, estudiantes en... Um, o otras colegio, o otros colegios en este ejemplo. Entonces, el examen en este caso es un poco más importante como el, en el proceso normal, si me, me entiendes, ¿ok? Gracias. Sí, de nada, de nada. ¿Qué más? ¿Cuántas preguntas del ensayo? Okay. Uh, what's the percentage for scholarships, the maximum percentage that they can get at Agustana? Sí, um, bueno, en, en nuestro caso um, ofrecemos al nivel máximo 50% de nuestros costos completos, como, como dije, incluyendo vivienda, comida, seguros, todo lo que necesitas para ser estudiante. Al, al nivel máximo, 50%. A, a veces también es posible trabajar un poco dentro de, del campus. Um, normalmente los estudiantes um, están utilizando este dinero um, como dinero de, de bolsillo, ¿no? Para... para um, ir con los amigos a un restaurante en los fines de semana y, y no para pagar los costos de la universidad, pero puede, puede apoyarle, apoyarte un poco um, con esto si, si quieres. Y después de, de tu primer año estudiando en cualquier universidad en los Estados Unidos, entonces se puede trabajar fuera del campus y allá es, es posible que, que vas a ganar un poco más dinero y, y es un poco más fácil apoyar a uh, tu familia con los costos de, de tus estudios en los Estados Unidos. Pero no es trabajar, uh, no es una forma de pagar uh, los costos completos. Hay, hay que tener um, um, apoyo desde tu familia o, o familiares o, o alguien 
más uh, uh, fuera de, de um, uh, las, uh, el dinero que, que ganas uh, de tu trabajo y, y de las becas que ofrecemos o cualquier universidad en los estados uh, puede ofrecerte. Uh -huh. Entonces, sí, 50% en nuestro caso. Una última pregunta. Uh, about talking about the essay, would you say that it's better for us to make the essay in more formals uh, or like more chill? Because I tend to get, if I do it too formal, I get into like gobbledygook and something like that. But I don't know, what would you say? So I only heard part of that. So you're asking about the essay and, and formal, formal versus. Yes. What would you recommend, like doing it formal or, or like more chill, like in our words, not to, you know, uh, go for you and stuff. Yeah, that, that's that's a good that's a good question. Um, so I would I would err on the side of being formal. Um, you don't want it to sound like, I mean, I've seen this sometimes, you don't want it to sound like an email to one of your friends or um, even using, you know, sometimes people use emojis or text language, those kinds of things. You don't want to do that in the context of a college essay, of course. Um, but at, at the same time, you don't want to be too formal because we can also tell if, um, you know, you're, you're using a dictionary to come up with really complicated words that you wouldn't normally use in, in daily life, right? So you, <laughs> you want to strike a balance between there, probably more formal, not using you know, very colloquial phrases and things that you might um, say with your friends, but not so formal that um, it doesn't sound like you. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. All right, Ben, well, thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate your time and your presentation. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that we have such a full room and it was a pleasure to speak with you. Um, Marcial has my contact information. If you wish to send a follow-up question or email, I would be very happy to, uh, to hear from you and to help you in any way I can. So thank you again for coming to the presentation today. All right, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Gracias a todos.